Hello internet and welcome to another video. Today I am going to be showing you how to make this a planet. And I'm not going to go into a, a super amount of detail, it's going to be kind of a quick and dirty way to do it. Uh, if you want a more, much more detailed look at how things work and how to put them together, Andrew Price from BlenderGuru.com has a wonderful uh, long tutorial, very detailed and with a lot of information. I'm going to show you kind of a quick and dirty way uh, of how to achieve a decent looking result. So without further delay, go into Blender, open up a new project, set it to cycles, delete the default cube, uh, add a UV sphere. Uh, I like to use 64 segments and 32 rings. You don't really need to, but I just find the extra detail helps. I'm going to name it planet and add a subdivision surface modifier. Set it to smooth. So I'm now going to set the world to black just so we have a plain background. You can put whatever you want in the background. If you're rendering it your choice, I'm going to change the lamp to be a sun. Set the size to 0 0.01 so the shadow is a little bit sharper on the dark side of the planet. I'm going to use nodes and set the strength to 2 so it's just a little bit more harsh. I'm going to position the camera around a little bit just so I get a nice uh, contrast there and change some of the camera settings. Do whatever you want with that. Alright, now it's time to make the material for the planet. So I'm going to add uh, a texture coordinate node and an image texture node. I'm going to open up my image. I am using this one, link in the description for where I got it. I'm going to plug in the generated to the vector and set it from flat to sphere so that it projects properly. And now we have this, which looks like a planet. Pretty cool. Uh, but there's some more stuff that we can do to make it look a little bit better. So I'm going to add a color ramp node plug in the image texture and temporarily plug it into the diffuse shader just so that we can see what's actually going on. Then I'm going to mess around a little bit with the handles on the color ramp node, moving the black and the white handle uh, around so that I did a decent amount of contrast. This is going to be for the displacement, so whatever's black is going to look as if it's pushed in and whatever's white is going to look as if it's uh, popped out. Um, so I'm going to just try and get something that will be aesthetically pleasing. There's really no basis in reality for this. It's all up to what you think will look good. So then I'm just going to plug that into the actual displacement. And then we can see the effect it has on the plain white diffuse color. I uh, might have to mess around with it a little bit more. And as we can see, it is pretty strong. So I'm just going to add in a uh, math multiply node to decrease the effect and set it to something around uh, 0 0.02, maybe 0 0.015, depending on your preference. Plug your texture color back into the diffuse shader and this is what we've got. Looking pretty nice, but it still looks a little bit plain. So, I'm going to duplicate the planet, uh, call it atmosphere, and then go into edit mode and scale it by 1.001, .001, just a tiny bit, because this is just going to be our uh, our atmosphere object. Uh, I'm going to delete the planet material off of it and create a new one where I'm going to add a transparent shader and a mix shader. Plug the transparent into the top part and then keep the diffuse in the bottom part of the mix shader and I'm going to add an input layer weight node where I'm going to take the facing value and plug that into the factor of the mix shader. I'm going to use a blend value of 0.1 on the layer weight node. You can mess around with this to your liking. The lower the value, the more subtle the atmospheric effect will be. And now you can see we have a bit of an atmosphere going on on the edge of the planet there. Now the color of this is determined by the diffuse node, so you can change it to be whatever color you want your atmosphere to be. Uh, you can have it be light or dark or super saturated. I find it looks better if you keep it somewhere around white. I'm going to tint it on the orange side since we have kind of a, a dust dirt looking planet here, but you can easily do, uh, you can do whatever. Now we're going to get things set up to render. I'm going to move the atmosphere to layer 3 and move the planet to layer 2, leaving the light and the camera on layer 1. Just going to make sure I have all these layers selected, and I'm going to go over to the render layer panel on the right hand side, add a new one and call it atmosphere, whatever you want and make sure that it only includes layers 1 and 3. I'm also going to make sure that the original render layer only contains layers 1 and 2. 
I'm then going to go and select the planet object here, go over to the object panel, and change it the pass index to a value of 1. Then I'll have to go over to the render layer panel and make sure that on passes, object index is checked. I can then make sure that we have all three layers selected and give it a render. So now we can go over to the compositor, hit use nodes and backdrop. I'm going to copy the render layer and set it to be that second one that we made for the atmosphere. So now you can see that the first one is only our planet and the second one is just the atmosphere which gets more diffuse towards the edges. I want to add the atmosphere to the planet though so I'm going to add a color mix node and add the planet on top, the atmosphere on the bottom, and set the mix uh, type to add. So we can now see that the atmosphere is added to the planet. We're not done quite yet though because we want a little bit of extra something so I'm going to add a filter glare node, set it to be fog glow, set the mix to be 1, the threshold to be 0, and the size to be 9. Then I'm going to change it to be low, duplicate the node, uh, change it to be medium and duplicate the node once again and change it to be high. So then we plug in our new image into all of these glares and you can see that we have a low quality glare, we have a medium quality glare, and we have a high quality glare. Although the low and medium quality ones are uh, not very smooth so we're going to want to fix that. In order to do that, we can add a blur node, set it to fast Gaussian, uh, relative Y, set it to be 4% and 4% for the low quality layer, and duplicate that for the medium one as well, and set it to be 2% and 2%. Alright, so now that we have these low and medium quality layers blurred out, we can start adding them all on top of our original planet image. So we're just going to use another color mix add node for that, add in the original one on top, and then add the low quality layer, duplicate it again, do the same for the medium, and duplicate it once more, and do the same for the high. And the result that we get from this is, is interesting. Uh, might be what you're looking for. It's it's super blown out. It kind of looks like you took a picture right through a through a telescope, um, which is cool. I like the effect. But if it's not quite what you're going for, then we can do some things to change that. So add an ID mask node. Plug in that object index that we had there on the first render layer and set the index to be one. So we can see now that it is going to basically outline where the planet is. And we want to make that just a little bit smoother, so we're going to add a uh, filter dilate erode node to that. Set the uh, mode to feather and the distance to minus four. Uh, though as it stands right now, we have the planet uh, outline, so we want to invert that. So just add a color invert node, and there we go. We have everything except the planet selected, and we can use this as the factor value for adding the glare to the high and the medium uh, glares that we have here. And as we uh, check this out, we can see that it does indeed only add the glare to where the planet is not. So we get a nicer effect. The planet is not quite as blown out, but we still get that large glare around the outside. Although it looks a little bit muddy in the middle now, so we might want to adjust the factor value of the low one. I, I found 0.5 to be a nice value, but you can really mess around with these uh, as much as you'd like to get whatever look that you're going for. Alright, one last thing. We'll duplicate this blur node, set the uh, blur values to be 0.75% and 0.75%. And then we'll plug in the atmosphere, the on only the atmosphere, that set and render layer that we had, so that we will blur the atmosphere and then we will just add that right on to the uh, resulting image that we have so far. So just duplicate one of those add nodes there, plug in the uh, blurred atmosphere on the bottom, and now we have a pretty decent looking planet.
now all that's left is uh, the fun stuff. So you can mess around maybe with some uh, color balance. Make the, the lows a little bit blue or the, and the highs a little bit more orange. Uh, maybe you want to add some uh, lens dispersion. Add some uh, some distortion. Uh, pump up the dispersion a little bit to give you that uh, real lens look. I don't know. It's all uh, stylistic stuff at this point. Uh, you can mess around with it however however you want. And there you have it. This is our final product. The quick and dirty way of making a planet in Blender. It's not the most realistic thing ever, but stylistically I find it quite pleasing. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, found it useful, and I will see you in the next video.